The Consumer Electronics Show always gives us a glimpse into the future, not just the far future, but also the very near future. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the 10 best new things for gamers at CES 2019. Number 10 is Samsung's new Odyssey gaming laptop. Now, purely from an aesthetic perspective, the Odyssey represents a different vision a little bit. Not so far of a departure that we're gonna say to each other, this is the laptop, but instead of using two hinges to attach the monitor on the top, for the purposes of venting heat, they've gone with a central monitor hinge, which honestly makes it look kind of futuristic in a weird way, maybe retro futuristic even. However, things like the keyboard itself are not old school in any way, it's a nice looking laptop. It'll have three USB 3.0 ports, a USB-C port, Ethernet, HDMI, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, the 8th generation core i7 hexa-core CPU, and we'll use the NVIDIA RTX 20 series for its GPU. And just like the mobile version of the RTX 20 series, the mobile RTX 2080 they'll specifically be using in this one will support real-time ray tracing. The monitor shape kind of reflects something that Samsung is going for with their space monitor, which is another thing that I think particularly gamers will be interested in. The space monitor is cool because it sits up against the wall, looks a lot like a painting or photo, and pivots down, but it's not the only monitor Samsung introduced. They also introduced a 49-inch super ultra-widescreen curved monitor with dual QHD resolution, which, let's be clear, that's pretty wild. Number 9 is the new Alienware Area 51M. This is probably a thing that I got quite into while watching all of the information and reading stuff about it. It is a beefy, basically desktop computer in a laptop case that is not bothering to be small. It's not really bothering to be portable. It's kind of just thick. But here's the thing. A lot of people buy gaming laptops, not necessarily to travel with their games, but rather move around in their house with their games. This Alienware laptop is modular. You can take it apart easily. It has regular Phillips or flathead screws. It labels where things go inside the laptop. It's literally saying, take me apart, replace things. Now, being it has to use proprietary stuff, I don't know how amazingly useful that will be unless Alienware puts out basically an unending supply of things that you could put into it. But still, it's a platform that nobody's really done, and fitting everything together would probably be a nightmare, so I get why they would do it proprietary. It's a good idea. For what it is, and when I say what it is, I mean a thick laptop. It's actually a pretty nice looking one. The way they've lit everything is very neat. They put up lighting strip around the venting stuff on the back. The keys are lit up in the traditional RGB gamer way, with the touchpad being lit up similarly. Now this one has desktop components in it. For instance, the Intel Core i9-990K is a desktop processor. Same goes for the graphics. It's got the RTX 2080 in it, but it's the desktop version of the chip. And this thick laptop's probably not going to be cheap. For those who are looking for more affordable thing, Dell, the owners of Alienware, are putting out out a new series of G series laptop. It's certainly not their first ones, but it is a much more Alienware like PC, which is always a good thing. Number eight is the HTC Vive Pro i, which is a new eye tracking upgrade on the HTC Vive Pro. Now you might wonder why this is important. It's something that can be used in business enterprise uses. They demoed a public speaking app that showed sort of the ability to get data on where you would make eye contact, where you're looking during making a speech. But more importantly, there's something called foveated rendering that they're introducing, which basically tracks where your eyes go and kind of follows the principle of variable resolution, except for it knows where your eye is. So, where your eye is, it puts all the computing power and has that area of the screen in much higher resolution than the areas that are in your peripheral vision, which is kind of brilliant. It's kind of implying rendering principles to resolution. When you're playing a game, the stuff that you see on screen is the stuff that is being rendered. They usually take everything out of the scene that isn't visible and put it back in the scene when it becomes visible, instead of just rendering all the polygons, placing a camera, and letting the game just sort of deal with the fact that the entire world is there. I think that's brilliant. Somebody might say, well, that's something that might help with lesser systems, but I would say, apply it to the most powerful system you've got. Prioritize what's visible. I think that is a brilliant development. Number seven is the Asus 
Republic of Gamers Mothership, and it is an interesting concept. It's kind of a Microsoft Surface as a gaming machine. And while that might sound kind of nonsensical, it's not an actual Microsoft Surface, of course. It's not really a laptop. It's actually got desktop components in it. It has the Surface style pop-up kickstand thing and a detachable keyboard. You don't have to use this keyboard specifically, but it is a neat keyboard. It's also got a 17 inch monitor with it's venting all around the monitor on the top specifically, which is kind of the best possible situation because heat rises. It's not something that you would normally see. It's definitely experimental. It's a different thing. In theory, it would probably be good for people who want to do not just laptop gaming while traveling, but need a way to plop down a monitor and play as if it is a desktop because it kind of actually is a desktop. But this guy is heavy. It is a 10 pound quote unquote laptop. So keeping that in mind, I mean, it's definitely a cool thing, but I could see it being something that people are maybe a little suspicious of just because they're not sure what to do with it. That being said, I think that it will probably justify itself for people who try it out. It looks really intuitive as far as giving you a few more different things you can do with it that you wouldn't normally be able to do with a laptop or a desktop. Number six is Razer's gaming monitor, the Razer Raptor, a 27 inch pivoting monitor with a beautiful bright strip of LED RGB lights at the base. Now, the cool thing about this is Razer has never really made a display before, and when they put one out, it's got some intuitive ideas to it. For one, like I said, it pivots, which is for sure a very welcome feature in something with such a stark base, but a simple addition is a hole in the back that allows you to thread your cables through it and keep them from being too much of a mess. That's of course a very welcome thing, because cables with computers can be a nightmare and fast. They also announced the ability to use haptic feedback in Amazon's Alexa with their Chroma Connected Devices program. How exactly that's going to shake out, I'm not 100% sure, but to be able to control your various gaming, lighting apparatus, and accessories with voice, or for that matter, to have haptic feedback, both not bad ideas. Number five, Acer revealed a $4,000 Predator Triton model, which comes in cheaper and also fix a big flaw in the touchpad. The Triton 900 has a 17 inch 4K display, eighth gen Intel core processors, and also doesn't have the touchpad above the keyboard like the Triton 700, which why would you do that? Now, worse than it just being in a terrible place, it being above the keyboard, it also sapped up a bunch of heat. So the touchpad would often be well above 100 degrees which, eh, not great. The Triton 900, on the other hand, has fixed that. The touchpad is now in a convenient place and doesn't burn you, which sounds like a silly thing to say, but really it would be very, very annoying, A, to reach above the keyboard and B, have the touchpad be super hot. On top of that, it's just a way better computer than a lot of what's out there, and we look forward to hearing more about it. Number four is the Corsair One gaming PC, of course was announced with some big upgrades. The Intel Core i9 9920X, of course, and the big Nvidia GeForce RTX 2080. I've tried to say that as little as possible because so many of the things at CES have involved the RTX 2080. They also have introduced a couple of additional less expensive, and when I say less expensive, I really want you to keep in mind that doesn't mean their budget versions of the Corsair one. Like the main Corsair one's five grand. Going a tier down, there's things like basically still really beefy PCs, but at $3,600 and $3,000 instead. Number three, AMD Radeon 7 was revealed. It has a second generation Vega graphics core, and its pin size is very small. It is the first 7 nanometer gaming GPU. That means they are using a die size that is significantly smaller. Also, it claims to be 25 to 35 percent faster than the previous Vega Core at the exact same power consumption, which is really cool. No, like literally, it's actually cool when you're not 
consuming more power, you're not generating more heat, usually. At least a lot more. They played some footage of Devil May Cry 5, running at 4K with ultra settings at 100 frames per second. Of course, it is sales pitch footage, so take that with a grain of salt, but it looked really good. There was also footage of The Division 2, but they did not provide frame rate numbers, so keep that in mind. But that also looked quite good, graphically speaking. It's also not that far away. It's hitting February 7th, and all things considered, the retail of $700 is not bad, especially considering what GPUs have cost for, you know, a while now. Obviously, GPU prices fluctuate a lot, so will it remain that price? I don't know. But it did have this goofy, flashy, very gaudy 3D rendered video of the graphics card itself that they played before talking about it, and I, I didn't really get me hyped. Just hearing about the card itself got me hyped. I think it's cool that they got the power consumption down while improving the performance. That's just, that's an automatically great thing. I can't wait to see it. I might have to pick up one of these. I might, I'm considering it. Number two are the 9th gen Intel processors, which we've mentioned on a few points already, but the 9th generation has a Core i3, i5, i7, and i9. There's of course versions with integrated graphics and Interestingly enough, the versions without integrated graphics will simply feature disabled integrated graphics, simply to avoid the die cast process having to be more expensive, which it just flies in the face of the idea that you should pay more for a thing that is actually more, because it's not. It's like the same thing with stuff disabled, which is really interesting, in my opinion. I'm not even like condemning that. I think that that's just a really interesting thing to learn about the manufacturing process and kind of counterintuitive, but also if it allows them to sell everything for a bit less, I don't know that it's a bad thing, but we'll of course see what the availability is of these new generation chips on a more ongoing basis. And finally, number one, Nvidia made its presence known as per usual by announcing a mid-tier GPU, the Nvidia RTX 2060, which actually is going to start out with an entry level option of just $349. That's really low for what is a ray tracing supporting card. In fact, they revealed that a Battlefield 5 ray tracing demo actually was running on the budget card and that they were showing off what the game could look like on a budget card, which is kind of amazing. They also showed off the mobile version of the RTX 2080, which is of course the beefier card, but the mobile version is really impressive. It is apparently a little less popular than the desktop GPU, however, the 2080 is clocking 4K at 60fps on Overwatch at very least for various people who have tested it, which is, I mean, let's just go ahead and say very good. And let's also just go ahead and say they showed off Anthem. They debuted a new Anthem trailer and announced that Anthem would support a new Nvidia feature called Deep Learning Super Sampling, which I'm sure we'll go into at some point. But let's just say it does a great job of fixing aliasing artifacts. And I do think it's going to be something that going forward really makes games looking better. Couple of quick bonus points for you. Republic of Games laptops a plenty aside from the one that we specifically talked about the rock mothership there are seven new devices from the ROG brand they're all Nvidia GeForce RTX 20 series enabled they include that chipset, and they're all really beefy. You see pretty high RAM numbers. Not just in the Max, but the default configuration seem pretty decent. And aside from that cool new Razer gaming display we showed off a few minutes ago, they also announced a new Razer Blade. It'll have the NVIDIA RTX 20 series laptop GPUs. Like I said, I tried to avoid saying that. I didn't want it to become repetitive, but that was a big thing at CES and it may or may not have been a big thing for you. What did you think was most interesting at CES 2019? Leave us a comment, let us know what you're thinking. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to click the button that says so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. So click the subscribe button and do not forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.